What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Season 2 Instagram Live, where we have some cool guests here. We got musicians, some actors, some filmmakers. If you guys haven't seen Season 1, feel free to flip back on my Instagram and YouTube and even Facebook, and you'll see those interviews. So today we got Mikey Wayne here. We're going to invite him in the room and uh, see what's going on here. If my stuff don't fly out. What's going on, Mikey? All right, man, I'm going to invite you and we'll get this rocking and rolling. Senate, what's up, everybody? Ready for a good interview here? I'm ready. I'm getting ready. Hey, man. Yo. I think, I think you're sideways. Waiting for the joke to connect. <laughs> I am sideways. Or you Hello. Sideways. <laughs> Should I turn my phone the other way? Yeah. Right, yeah, I think so. All right, hold on one second. Going up this way. This there is... we go. Hold up. Hold up. Pulling an audible. One second. You'll see the ceiling. Mikey's ceiling, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Bo? With Lindsay. How you doing? Shadow Girl. Welcome. Boom. Welcome. We welcome. There we go. It's a nice setup you got there. Thanks, man. Yeah, we um this is the COVID special right here. <laughs> there you go. So you're my first uh season two guest. For real? Well I'm honored. Thank you very much. So you are from California, moved to Alabama, now in Nashville. Yeah, I'm a I'm a cultural mutt, my friend. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's funny, I so uh tell me how you got into music in california like how'd you start to play and sing and what made you want to write oh dude um so it started with i mean my dad's a huge rocker you know always, he's always been a huge music fan um so yeah. and i remember growing up he was in uh, aviation so uh when they don't he built uh airplanes for the military and uh, okay don't need airplanes anymore right um that, you know, the contract runs out, you get laid off for a little while until more comes in. So I ah, okay. preschool, you know, kindergarten, super young. And uh, my dad was home for a while. And, you know, he'd be out there in the garage, like working on his dirt bikes, you know, all this kind of stuff. And just had Metallica or Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, whatever cranked. <laughs> Man, I just remember sitting on the garage, you know, the garage floor as a little kid. And it was like the moments that define me, like dirt bikes and music, you know. I remember yeah. music, it's like, man, I don't know what that is, but I want to do that, you know. Just because yeah. it makes you feel. You know, it made me feel a certain way as a kid, you know. Um, that was kind of my reaction, too, when I first heard that style of music. I was like, I instantly knew that's what I have to learn to play better. You know what I mean? Yeah, Absolutely. I don't know. My dad always fixed dirt bikes and stuff, too, so that's pretty cool. Dude, for real? Yeah. Awesome, <laughs> he doesn't play any instruments, though. I'm the only music guy. Um, my grandfather played violin, but um, that's, that's it. Interesting pair. Yeah. My parents don't play anything at all. Don't have a music. Oh, okay. You know, they can play the radio. <laughs> yeah. But, it's a similar, similar background. Yeah. Out of the, uh, out of the 80s metal bands, top two. Ooh, top two? Number one, straight up, no questions, Def Leppard. Number one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've been obsessed with them since I was a little kid. I don't know why. No! Yeah. <laughs> at all live these days? I seen them. I seen them. Uh, we did a pre-show for them. It's kind of like a fake opener up show. They wanted, uh, you know, those pre-shows that the radio stations do for the actual event. Okay. So that was that was uh that was pre-COVID, two years ago, three years ago, or something like that. But dude, I have so much respect for those guys because I mean they're what in their sixties now, and they don't yeah. a note. It sounds no. it sounds better than the record. It's amazing. They're better now than they were. Uh, I think ten years ago when they toured with Journey, they sound a lot better now. Yeah. See, I saw that tour. And they were phenomenal. Oh, you you like them then? See, I didn't really care for them then. I was like, I thought Journey was better. Def Leppard. Now it's like Def Leppard's a lot better. Journey kind of fell. All right, maybe Journey had an off night that night. Cause, well, I'll, I'll be nice. 
I love Journey. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. That was I cool. actually, I really dug the the singer before the the replacement guy. I don't. I, I still don't know his name. I can't remember his name. Um. Yeah. Um. And some, he was with him for like a year. Comments will know. <laughs> yeah. What's up, people? If you guys got any questions, Mikey is in uh, Nashville area. So I'm California. Any California people out there? Now, anyone tuning in, leave in comments, okay? Later, because I know this is going to be replayed as well, feel free to tag me and Mikey, and we'll get to your questions as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you miss it, no sweat. <laughs> yeah, because you're reposting this on uh, YouTube, right? Yep, YouTube. It'll be on Instagram and my Facebook. Okay. Right on, dude. Love it. So everywhere. That's the uh, second hair metal band, though. Um, God, I have to say Motley Crue. Okay. Not yeah. for, um, definitely not for quality, but man, the show is, I've probably seen yeah. more than I have any other band. Just cause, you know, when you go there, it's, a, it's an immersive experience. And yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a theatrical people. thing, you know? Yeah. So yeah, those are probably my top right there. But after you were uh, tinkering around with dirt bikes and all that kind of stuff, what, uh, who gave you a guitar or what made you want to, so, how'd you play guitar? <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I begged my parents for what's probably seemed like years to me, you know, as a little kid, but probably wasn't actually that long um, okay. for a guitar. And they finally got me one in second grade and it was from the, Back then, like Toys R Us was a thing. It's not even a thing anymore. Um, yes, love Toys R Us. Oh. Like a toy guitar. It was a serious guitar, but they had an electronics department in Toys R Us. So it's some off-brand, you know, Strat with a speaker inside. So you don't even have to have an amp. But you had a speaker. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I have it upstairs. <laughs> I should, like, get one of the roomies to bring it down. It says, like, Burt or something <laughs> on it. Burt Guitars. <laughs> Uh, actually, it's Synsonics is the name of it. Oh, okay. So it's, it's kind of fancy. Oh. They're, they're trying. <laughs> trying. I got mine from Ames. Remember Ames? Mm -mm. No? Maybe that was only a northern company. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's got to be a northern thing. Yeah. But. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're all out of business now. Everywhere except for J.C. Penney's. And that's all I can think of. J.C. <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess I guess the Toys R Us electronics department would be like the equivalent of Walmart probably these days. Yeah, uh, yeah, but it was huge. I mean, those stores were absolutely huge. Yeah, no, absolutely. But no, it's funny. Like, even though I begged my parents to give me that guitar, I actually there was so much to do living in California. Like, you know, I was into skateboards, and you know, we'd go riding like in the desert. You know, that was our family. Yep once a month you know there's always dirt bikes skateboards the beach whatever so yep. i never actually i would like i was really good at air guitar you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'd my bed and you know do the thing crank up the stereo but until i actually moved to alabama when i was in middle school that's when i actually started to learn because okay. it was such a culture shock you know moving from near la to yeah you know small town alabama was it more uh was it more country music you know a lot less rock i would say right yeah a lot less rock it was like mainly a lot of like southern rock down in that area yep. yeah yeah People love you know love country but man like leonard skinner allman brothers you know that was like the thing there because it wasn't that yeah. you've heard of muscle shoals right who? Muscle Shoals, Alabama. No. All right. Do you know the do you know the song "Sweet Home Alabama"? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So the last verse where they say "Muscle Shoals has got the swampers," they've been known to pick a song or two. Oh, that see, that's the verse that I cut out when I when I <laughs> sing it. <laughs> I just cut it out. That's probably why I never. I just cut it right out because it's too long. I think the song's too long. Yeah, yeah. So that verse, yeah. but that's about uh, Muscle Shoals. And they have, like, all these iconic recording studios there. Um, I mean, the Rolling Stones recorded there, Aretha Franklin, Elvis Presley. I mean, it's just, you know. So, yeah, everybody. Um, so yeah, it's a really cool area. But that's kind of near where I grew up. I actually went to college near Muscle Shoals. 
Uh, so huge. Okay. There. But yeah, a lot of it's real, you know, based around like Southern rock, not necessarily country. But okay. So how'd you meet Rogers? I know you. I hear you're good friends with him. Dude, you and I have so many mutual connections. And <laughs> when I first met Rogers, um, you're one of the first artists that he played for me that he had worked with. So like, I've known you. Yeah. Before. But anyway, um, do you remember a band, a uh, Christian rock band, real heavy called Decipher Down? Yeah, yeah, I still listen to them. Right. I found them three years ago, actually. I would go, these guys, I didn't even know they existed, but I go, I really like this stuff. Dude, they're so good. But I, um, my brother and another guy from my hometown, Alabama, Decatur, shout out Decatur, Alabama. Um, to my brother and a guy who ran a studio, studio down there, they um, were on the road doing production for Decipher Down. And oh, okay. He nice. the band, you know, a couple times and hang out. And the drummer at the time, he's no longer with the band, but uh, his name's Josh. He, we ended up talking, you know, and he actually had a development kind of company where he would take young bands under his wing and kind of mentor them. And so I got hooked up with him. And he got me just song. He was like, song right, man. Just just write songs, record demos, send them to me. You know, just do that. Don't think about anything else. So <laughs> actually, I quit. Uh, I took off a semester of college just to song write. You know. Oh, really? I was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I finally wrote this one song. And Josh is like, now you're ready. That's it. You know, I was like, ready for what? He's like, well, I'm going to hook you up with uh, my good friend, Joe. And I was like, all right. He's like, so <laughs> go and do some songwriting, right? I was like, yeah, I'll go to Nashville. So I would drive like almost three hours from, you know, where I was at in college all the way up here uh, yep. to write with Joe Pangallo from uh, Day of Fire. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that brings back memories. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I need to call Joe, man. It's been a while, but. Uh, so Joe and I, Joe and Chris. we wrote for probably like six months. And then one afternoon, randomly, he was like, man, you know what? It's like, you really need to meet my band's producer, Rogers. It's like, all right, Roger? No, he's like, no, Rogers. Yeah, everybody Rogers and Ness, yeah. <laughs> everybody gets his name wrong. Um, I know, they call him Mason, Masson, uh, my yeah. son. I was like, <laughs> just Rogers, man. Yeah, just, I, I'm but, Rog now. <laughs> Every everybody that's tuning in now too or later. So Rogers Masson, I met him through Day of Fire, yeah. and then he produced my first EP. So that's what we were talking about. He's a record producer out there. I actually had him on as I believe like, the last guest for season one, <laughs> and then you're the first one. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's cool. But yeah. So Joe and I went, and he introduced me to Rogers, and we started writing, and you know, we had just man, Rogers and I just hit it off, and. Uh, Joe, Joe ended up, you know, Joe started a family and, and got into doing other things. So, you know, yeah, continued to write with Rogers ended up when I got out of college, I, um, I convinced, I don't even know how I pulled this off because <laughs> I wasn't even a production major. Like I was a entertainment industry business major, right? Uh, oh, okay. I didn't want to make music like part of my college, you know, I, I yeah, did yeah. music business side and said I convinced my uh professor who was over me, whatever you call it, um uh I convinced her to let me do a production internship with Rogers, even though well, okay. Right, even though Sly. Sly Devil. Yeah. <laughs> I was Rogers and I were eating Chipotle like one day after a ride and thing. It's like, man, you know anybody I can intern with? He's like just intern with me. It'd be great. We can write songs all the time. <laughs> That's so, what he sounds like, too. Yeah. So I did help him engineer in the studio, but I didn't know anything about, you know, my, my engineering skills were this, you know. Yeah. And uh, like I know EQ kind of, it goes th up and down this thing. It yeah. sounds different. <laughs> I knew how to run Pro Tools like a little bit. And, a little bit. Yeah. If you play any kind of instrument, you know how to hook up you know, microphones and guitars and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Volume knobs. Yeah. So he just threw me into the hot seat. And I mean, for the most, I, 
be able to assist him on sessions, which was awesome, you know, get into work in all these big studios here in Nashville, be exposed yep. to really big songwriters that I looked up to and, you know, but, you know, we weren't in the studio, we were songwriting. I got college credit for it. <laughs> there you go. Is that your studio right now or? Uh, the one I'm in right now? Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, my, we have this huge, th the whole house is uh, underneath is a finished basement. So it's, uh -huh. it's the same size as the house upstairs. It's huge. Okay. So this is a, we took all the gear out of the trailer, me and my buddy. And, um, you know, we're like, well, it's not going on the road anytime soon because of COVID. So, uh, yeah, you know, we just set up the, set up the studio and got to tune the room and just, you know, been writing and recording down here. So it looks cool. I see, I see now the picture too. It looks neat. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. It um I'm trying to think. So from from you getting in with Rogers, like are you uh doing your own mixing and, and recording and stuff now too? Yeah. I imagine you got the stuff there. Oh definitely. But, uh, yeah. Um yeah. I'm still like I'll record demos, work tapes, you know, I'll work on other friends' projects. But okay. I'm kind of a firm believer in um when it comes to my own stuff. Excuse me. Um, when it comes to my own stuff, I would rather have somebody else's ears on it as far as mixing, because you know, it's your own music. Like you can be really too close to it and suck the light. Yeah. Yeah. You know, true. It's true. really hard to make those tough creative decisions of, you know, I really want that guitar part in there, but does it really make sense, or am I just holding it too dear? You know, does it need to be cut? So yeah, yeah, I'll do demos here, but then ultimately, plus, dude, I love going. I don't. There's so many records out there that can, uh, you know, prove me wrong on this, but this is just my preference. I like going into the studio with a live band and doing a record that way. There's, yeah, you know, there's a magic in the air. Um, that's. I could, so much I could hear it. You know, there's more on the line and you just get in it, you know, not like you would at your own house, you know. That, that promo that you have out, because um, people, if you're trying to find Mikey's music, at, he's working on a new EP, but he does have a YouTube promo. Definitely check out. So is that the way you recorded the music in that promo? Is a band and then yeah. go from there? Yeah, so we did the band. We worked at uh, Warner Brothers. And uh, you know, did all. The ah, okay. So that's what Rogers was working on when I seen that post. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So we love working over at Warner Brothers. Um, but Sounds good. Yeah, we do all the basic tracks there. Get the whole vibe down with the band, and then yeah. you know we'll do overdubs here at the house. You know, or um, it's like any guitar Vocal. overdubs or piano or you know any kind of synth instrument. We'll do it here at the house or have somebody, you know, create it in their studio and send it over to. Um, yeah. And then we'll go back to do the final vocals. We'll go back to Warner Brothers. Because again, I just, you know. We, oh, okay. I, you don't do vocals at your place. I could do it here. You know, it's like the same vocal chain, all that. But going there and being in that space, I mean, it's just on, you know. Motivates it, yeah. I, it I know what you mean. Then I do at my own house. You know, there's a space. I can't. It's always a battle of. I'll oh, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. I just I can't explain why it is, but I would rather pay the money to go there because the the product ends up exponentially better. You know. Yeah, and some of that is like you said. Is it the actual space? Is it the mental mindset? Then you're getting into things now that are psychological and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's true. It's like um, there's nothing wrong with like, you know, the because I've had a bedroom studio. I, that's where I started off in my spare bedroom yeah. with two monitors and a thing and an interface and an amp and one preamp, I think, just for my vocal. And um, it, it does. It's like you grow and you go to studios and you work on, you know, your own stuff. And, and I'm always a reconfigurer. Like I just redid my studio here. And I finally got a desk, like an official desk. I got all the crap in here. 
and it right now it just it feels totally different like i feel like i am it kind of felt studio-ish but now it really feels studio-ish and it kind of like i can almost hear better <laughs> does that make sense yeah no it completely makes sense i'm yeah like with this room i'm never satisfied like you know i'll, I'll do something that's how i felt like, yeah that's how i felt stuff on the wall back there you know i had to create a vibe and now i'm like i need more of this vibe yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know it makes the space i feel more creative when my space is interesting and cool and vibey and you know yeah yeah i even i would think even like working at a real studio um you'd want some of the vibe to change eventually like if you were the engineer and you worked in there every single day you'd be like today i'm gonna put on a freaky light just because i want it to look different you know what i mean yeah we always anytime i go in over at warner brothers we'll all everybody in the band um rogers himself like we'll all bring trinkets from the house you know something that yeah yeah had like this giant bear rug in the middle of the um you know, the live track and room. <laughs> the, the, the drummers, oh, like, you know, that he went hunting and up in like Alaska or something and brought back this bear. And it's like, yeah. You know, so we brought this bear rug into the studio. And, you know, it just makes it feel like home, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You want that too. You want a sense of, yeah. I'm in my element, you know, I'm calm. But I'm, I'm not going to like, Space that I'm paying a lot of money for, so I better get it done right. <laughs> so let's talk about this new EP. Everybody out there, if you have questions for me or Mikey, feel free to put them in the chat. How you doing today? Where are you from, everybody? We'll uh, we'll get to you here in a minute. So let's uh, let's rock and roll. <laughs> let's rock and roll the uh, uh, new EP here. Anything you can uh, slip out here? Anything I can slip out here, like on the live? Yeah, you don't have to sing it, but just uh, the down low, you know what I mean? Yeah, so there's actually a bunch already finished in the, you know, in the in the trenches, ready to launch. I was actually going to put it out last year in 2020. Oh, really? All of everything hit the fan, you know. All yeah. was canceled and, and was like, all right, put the brakes. Let's see what's going to happen here and, well, nothing much has changed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So all that is going to be coming out now. So, and it was a weird transitional time too, because um, he's say anything about uh, did Roger say anything about my old band Live by Satellite? No, no. Okay. So that's when I first met Rogers. We created this project called Live by Satellite. Awesome band, but um, you know people change and guys get married and whatever. And, you know, it was coming to a close and that was mm -hmm. right. That was in 20, the end of like 2019. Right. So we, okay. Okay. Down, and then I'm launching this solo project and then COVID hits. But <laughs> the perfect time, perfect time, man. A nice vacation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, that'll be, we'll have some stuff coming out here in the next few months. Um, just yeah, kind of focusing, getting that out, and probably doing an acoustic tour to help support that. You know, just try to get out where we can. You know. Yeah, kind of gradually work on wherever we're allowed. The game plan. Yeah, well, I mean, I know like some states are they're more lenient than others, and other you know what I mean. It's, yeah. it's all kind of in the air, but yeah. so maybe, even if uh, even if you could, even if everything opened up right now would you jump on a stage in front of five thousand people at right now absolutely you would dude absolutely as long as as long as i wasn't going to get raked over the coals in the news for having a concert that <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> see i i i would but i would not because of what's going on even if it say it was tomorrow you know what i mean i'm um if it was done like my it was done well like i said you know you don't want to do anything to perpetuate the problem you know right yeah um well i don't i don't feel like uh i can ask people to come to something when i don't even know if it's perfectly safe you know what i mean or it depends on their actions if they can make it safe exactly yeah so it's yeah. 
are there proper guidelines, you know, being followed and whatever? And yeah. that's going to be so hit or miss for a while to come, you know, because who said every state is different, every country is different. Um, yep. You know, so what are gonna what's going to be the requirements from you know one border to the next? It's going to be an interesting game. So yeah. So I noticed your sound definitely rock influence. You got some country. Then I heard some like synth stuff at the end of your uh, promo, and I was like, "That's like uh, like John Carpenter or something, man." Right? <laughs> yeah. I just my stuff. I try. You know, so many people want to put everything in a box. You know, call it something because we're all comfortable with. Yeah. Box. What do you sound like? Yeah. What do you? Well, it's interesting, man. You, you. I always ask people, you know, what kind of music they listen to, and yeah. You know, it used to be, say, like 15 years ago, somebody would give you a genre. It's like, oh, I, I listen to rap or I listen to rock, you know, whatever. But now you ask somebody that question and, you know, they go, oh, well, I listen to everything. And it's not a cop out. Like, they're dead serious. Everybody listens to everything. Yeah. It's just, it's, I think we're in this great time in society where you can kind of bend the the rules as far as genre goes and you know i just want to make good music like if you know like uh think about like john mayer or the eagles like you know john mayer's he's pop he borders pop rock country same with the eagles. Yeah, blues and jazz yeah it's just great music you know that's that's what I want to create. And if you're a rocker and you hear the rock influence in it and you like it, awesome. If you hear a country influence in it, awesome. You know, it's, it's music for everyone. Yeah, I heard both, to be honest. I figured because I'm like, well, you got the California and then you got the Alabama. So I'm like, I hear both. But the synth stuff, I was like, kind of threw me off because I'm like, I don't, not in a bad way, but I, I'm like, I think he... He's got to like some horror movies or something in there, you know? <laughs> well, it's like, a, are you, are you a fan of any, like, a, like the music from the movies? Rock, you know, just, um, think about the eighties, like all the synths that were in the, all that eighties rock, especially journey. Yeah, it's great. So like trying to incorporate, um, you know, some of those modern elements. Sorry, I'm getting a message from Facebook here. Guys, I'm, I'm selling my Mesa dual rectifier. <laughs> Are you really? Oh, nice. Yeah. Anyway, that's it's bittersweet. Bittersweet. This guy's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like hundred bucks. How much is he gonna always? How much is he willing to pay? Yeah, hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any money right now to buy something like that? Anyway, well, um, but yeah, getting back to you know taking that uh that classic rock sound and adding some modern pop elements into it. You know? Just something fun to do. You know, why not? Yeah. Experimenting, genre blending. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. Especially, you know, it's your first EP for your first solo project, you know, where I feel like, you know, probably you felt like this too when you had a band, you kind of wanted to stick to something. And maybe you couldn't venture off 100% because you got other guys. Yeah. Yeah. You've got, you know, creative influences. Yeah. And the whole democracy. Dude, I can't play that. I won't play that on the bass, you know, that <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> democracy in, in music amongst guys, it's really hard, you know, to, yeah, yeah. to balance that. Because we all listen to so many different things. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know. Um, it can be golden or it can be frustrating. <laughs> so, do you, do you believe in uh, the singer runs the band? Or the band runs the band, especially a singer that doesn't play an instrument. Ah, well, I can't relate to that because I do play an instrument. So, <laughs> uh, in theory, in theory, I, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say I believe the singer runs the band per se. You know, it just depends on. I think every person in a band, if you're in a band scenario, you all have to realize what each other's strengths are yeah if you there has to be a leader there has to be a leader yeah oh yeah and i know you know sometimes that rubs guys the wrong way but there has to be somebody who's responsible for the ultimate decision 
Even if you yeah. do it collectively, somebody has to move the train along. Uh, yeah, like Metallica, at least it's it's really Lars and James, which yeah. is kind of odd for a drummer to take cue like that. Well, but like, that's where you know Lars, you know, take the instruments out of it, you know, it's and strip it down to just people. Who has the most business sense or more sense or money? Sense, you know, yeah. Just break it down that way. Understand each other's role within the organization if if you all understand each other's role like what my strength is and what your strength and weakness is and you all are okay collectively with everybody's role then you can settle yep. something good but that doesn't always happen you know it's hard to find guys in a collective that you know can agree roles and agree and are okay when the leader makes the decision. You know? Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure you've, you've, it, you haven't always been solo, right? You've, you've had like, you had band members? No, I mean, when I was in high school, I learned from a very young age to ditch the band route. Everyone goes, you gotta get a band, gotta get a band. I would like a screw the band. <laughs> That's one thing, like, maybe I, I don't know that I would trade any of the bands, but man, that's why I'm solo now. Like, I've, yeah, I love but guys, and, and like my last band, we also have great relationships, you know, and, um, you know, I love those dudes yeah. to death, but, you know, they, they grew in different directions, and, you know, one of them is now running his own, like, really successful home studio. And, you know, I'm super proud of him for that. One of the guys, he's now a fighter pilot for the Navy, you know? Wow. <laughs> like, you know, you go wow. being in a band, touring and, you know, partying and whatever. And now he's in the Navy, you know, super responsible. <laughs> I'm proud of him, you know? It's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, once those were, that kind of morphed and, and shut down, I was like, all right, I don't want to, you know, I think it's time for a change. Like, I've learned that, um, you know, with what I want to do, I'm pretty headstrong and I know that I'm pretty stubborn. <laughs> so, but in a way of, you know, what you want, Yeah, I just know what I want yeah. and I don't see that's not headstrong or, st or stubborn to me. <laughs> all right. All right. It's not, it's so hot. you're, um, you're, you know, it's like a director because I, I have a little film yeah. background. So it's yeah. directors, whether you want to, follow them or not they they know what this thing's gonna look like or they should anyways and like uh i'll give you an example like james cameron i'm sure he's not the easiest director to work with but oh, man look at look how his movies come out you know what i mean you know yeah and that's where it's funny like rogers being the producer and also my main songwriting partner he's like you know another extension of the band like he and i yeah click on every level you know even though he's a producer and songwriter like I go to him with everything, you know, all yeah. my marketing ideas. He's just such a good dude to resonate, you know, to, to bounce ideas off of. And he's, you know, not even on the road with me, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah. so I just, we, I sat down with Rogers after kind of closing down the last band and it's like, look, we talked about, was, this is where I want to go. This is what I want. This is the vision. And, you know, how do we do that? It's like, man, just, it's going to cost you a little more, you know, up front, but like hire out, you know, the band, like all the, you know, say, I mean, it's really common in country, you know, especially you've got Jason Aldean and, you know, the band, you know, it's all the same guys, but they're hired, you know, they don't, they don't make creative decisions necessarily. Like they show up and they do their job, you know, it's not, yeah. you know, they're all, they're all friends, you know, in, in that environment, but, there's work and then there's friendship and there's a hard line between it, you know, Un yeah. when you start a band with your friends and, you know, then that's where the whole, well, yeah, dude, I want to <laughs> go out. Uh, I got dinner with my girlfriend tonight, <sighs> you know, that sort of thing. And yeah. you're like, well, dude, we got it. We got a gig. No, we got to cancel it. We got a gig. We got a, I can't, you know, yeah. And we're, you know, when you're working, the other guys know their purpose, you know, it's, Exactly. Yeah. And when you're working with guys that, uh, and that's not to downplay any, 
you know, of your friends and their musicianship or whatever. It's um, that. Yeah. Yeah. They just don't take it maybe as serious as, as you do, you know, that's cool. Yeah. And, and, and I buy, I see my friends watching this, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, no fingers pointed at, at, at anybody. It's just a general, it's, it's just a general thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. In general. To have that line and, you know, hire guys and um, you know, who that's just what they're into that's the job you know they show yep. man i can't tell you how nice it is like having a a music director you know where i don't have to show up and you know, like be the heavy you know like hey you keep missing that note i don't have to say anything <laughs> music directors you know it's his job you know yeah i yeah you know take a water break and then you know they they sort it out yeah great you go drums, man. I'll be back in half an hour. That's gonna sound great. <laughs> you know? But you know, having that structure built in is is really, you know, and and you don't necessarily get that with a band per se. Yeah. Well, some of the session guys too, you get a rapport with. Like, um, yeah. I've used some of the drummers I've used for almost seven years on my stuff, and they know when I send them something. Like this is kind of like Frank's style. You know what I mean? They know that. Where the new guys. Yeah. It's interesting because they put their stamp on it, which kind of changes your music a little bit. But then you got to say, you got to listen to my other stuff too, because I have to have a little bit of that in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and that's the cool thing, man, I found about. Um, so the first two singles I did for my solo project, you know, we hired all session guys. And I mean, just. Can you give us the name of your single that you're going to roll with? Ooh, ooh. I think we're going to roll with uh, a song called California. Okay. Yeah. Ironically enough, it's actually. And then you got Alabama, and then you got Nashville. <laughs> that would be cool. The album just state names. I would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But, but dude, going into the. I got Virginia. I got Virginia. So you have a, got a lot of common. Yeah. Nice, nice. But yeah, going into the studio to do these first couple singles for a project, the solo project. I mean, you know walked in we had all these a-list session guys and you know you have a vision of what you think it should sound like in your head but then that was the first time where i walked into a room of just top-notch professionals and handed the creativity over to them and rogers in the yeah yeah and all i did was sing i didn't even play guitar you know I just walked in, vocal booth. I you know played the song in the acoustic forum, maybe twice, and they charted it out. And they go in there, yeah. And dude, it just it sounds like a record. It sounds like it's coming off the radio, you know, with these guys. They're so talented. And yeah, being able to trust in these guys like so much, and to let them do their job because they know so much more than I do the product was infinitely better than what I ever could imagine. Yeah. So that the blown up version, the cool experience, you know, actually, um, Brian, you, didn't you interview Brian Craddock from Daughtry's band? Yeah. Yeah. I've worked with him a couple of times. So he actually played on uh, a couple of these singles. Oh, did he? Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So what a good guy, like, man, to be able to create and make music, with him, you know, I've been listening to that guy on the radio for, you know, ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. And now I'm he's like, uh, I, I told him that when in the studio, um, when I went down to Virginia when I was working with him, and uh, where he, where we mesh is, he really likes Megadeth. So I go, you know, just picture Megadeth and yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> Love it. That's funny, but yes, yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, to work with those guys that I've all. That I've, I've heard all their licks on the radio, you know, and now they're playing on my songs. And I'm, yeah. Who am I? Like, you got the Grammys, you know. I'm just gonna keep yeah, it and let you, you know, paint. I always, I always think of it as a family tree. You ever think of it that way, where it's like, you really think about it, and you're like, wow, you know, you got say Daughtry, and then you got Brian, and he's worked with me, he's worked with you, he's worked with all the other artists he's produced, oh, yeah. and then. They have, it's like the connection. If you were to, somebody were to chart it out, 
you know, you got Day of Fire because uh, Chris opened up for Day of Fire, and then you got it's it's almost like a weird coincidence of like what's the coincidence of you working with a lot of people that I did, and right? you know what I mean, and interviewing. It's like well, you never think so. You no, know, it's it's just such a smaller world than than you realize. You know, yeah. Um, even you know, even your networks between not only just say, Nashville, but you know, Nashville and L.A. or what? I mean, yeah, you run into a lot of the same people. You know, even when you're in a different city, you're like holy crap. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Whole world, man. Very well, I appreciate you coming on here. Any uh, questions? Feel free throw them in the chat here. We got a few more minutes, yeah. and uh, afterwards. Definitely tag us, all right, and we'll get back to you. Mikey, we'll get your uh, your questions all squared away. Of course. Ab <laughs> What's up, Terry? How you doing? We got Terry and Brandy. We got uh, a few other people I know in here. Dude, Ryan. Danger Mouse. We got all yeah, you got to flip back, and that's – I'm not doing that because I'm not screwing anything up in there. So. <laughs> Manchester, UK. Give us one of your lovely smiles. There it is. There it is. <laughs> so uh, before we go, one thing, this is out of my personal questions here. Um, Hit me with what guitar? What guitars you use? What kind of mics you use? Ooh. And then your techniques for uh, studio versus live. Go on. My techniques for what? Studio versus live. Uh, like for me, I have a different approach almost to playing guitar uh, when I record or even sing than when I do live. So, all right. So what I'm using here, I'll just go through as far as like doing acoustic demos here. I've got one of these, uh, SC electronic pencil mics. Okay. Fantastic yep. and not expensive at all. This is actually Rogers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've, here, he has one and I have one. So like I've got an AKG one of those. Okay. Yep. So I use that yep. here, and then, dude, this uh, hold on, this uh, the new Slate microphone, the Modeler. The Modeler. Yeah, dude, it's killer. We um, cause in uh, Warner Brothers they have like a modded U sixty seven. Oh. And dude, I mean it's like a ten thousand dollar microphone. You know, it's just. I can't afford that here at my house. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's crazy the technology now. Um that you know Slate has gotten so good with that stuff. I literally can't tell a difference. You know, you pull up they have you can model, you know, the 67 and all these other vintage microphones. And Okay. Dude, it sounds identical. It's amazing. Hmm. You know, and nice. The, you know, the mic's, you know, a couple hundred bucks, something like that. I forget how much it is, but. Yeah, I think they're, uh, like, they sell more expensive one for, like, eight or something I've seen. But still, for 800 if you can model everything, that's, that's pretty good. 1000 you know, it's 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 insane. I got a Newman right here, uh, uh, 103. Nice. I use that usually when I broadcast stuff. And uh, I've, I've bought in Shore. I've tried AKG. I've got an SE mic tube over here. So far, the Newman I like the best. All right, yeah. I mean, dude, that's the thing. If you find your thing, like I, I'm not a gearhead. I could care less if it sounds good, plays good. Yeah, I don't care. You know, again, it could be from Toys R Us. I, if it sounds, <laughs> yeah, I don't care. You know, yeah. Same with a microphone. If it works, you know. But so for live. Um, I actually use the uh, uh, Audix OM7. Okay. Yeah, my front of house guys got me on that. I, I like a really uh, hyped vocal. You know, really, okay. really hot and just, like when I'm in the studio, and we're using the 67, you know, the way Rogers kind of gains it out, he calls it hair. You know, you can almost hear the sizzle of the hair. You know? Yeah. And it, you want to gain it. Yeah, it's in, when I get headphones on, it sounds like my voice is right here. Like I'm just staring myself in the face. You know, I love that. I love to hear all the little sibilance. Okay. 
Onyx OM7 over, you know, as opposed to like a standard 58, you know? Yeah. Like that's my jam, man. 58s are great. They're awesome. But something about that OM7, you know, live, when I've got my ears in, you know. They just, I mean, it seems more it's just intimate. More, more present, you know, to me. Yeah. So I don't, when it's. I think you'd like the Newman 105 too. That, that right. does almost the same thing. Uh, and it right. has that crispness that yeah. you're talking about too. If I want to have that, dude, I'm not pushing as much. You know, I'm, I'm, I can sing for hours. Yes. Um, and that's really hard to get because, you know, as, a, as an opening band, as a younger band, you don't always get a great, you know, sound check. You don't always have a great in-ear mix. Yeah. You don't have time. Yeah, you don't have time, you know. So as long as I can have a present vocal right here and I can feel the kick drum, I don't have to hear anything else, you know. I won't overstrain and I'm not going to get off. With it. We're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, as far as what kind of guitars do you use, though? Oh man, Les Pauls all day long. That's okay. Um, the old ones or the newer ones? Oh, hold on. I got I got two right here. Check them. These were. Uh... That's a pretty hefty board too. You got behind you. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy here, these uh both belong to a, a very dear friend and uh i should probably those lefties no they're all... i've got the camera turned around that's why it looks like oh, okay it. but um so this one is a 76 Les Paul uh deluxe wow. with um it's got the mini humbuckers in it okay and then uh this guy's a 78 1978 the one so just nice gibson guy joe played a gibson so i remember he used the gibson in one of my songs oh yeah it was uh the black one i don't, I don't know if you ever used it with him well i'm grabbing one more guitar and then uh so acoustic wise i'm all into this uh taylor gs mini with the co okay. co wood dude this so i recently um uh, taylor's this past year uh, became one of my partners so it's it's cool to like be in with a company like that you know and, um, yeah but so i got this is the first guitar i got from them and dude it's it's only like an 800 hundred dollar guitar you know as, a, as opposed to you know i mean it's, oh yeah i mean they have like five thousand dollar ones they can go crazy taylor's yeah but dude this thing it's a, i love it because it's, it's like a three-quarter scale almost and it's really it's okay. thin, so traveling with it's amazing. And you know, doing fly the color wood, uh, you get a deeper tone. Yeah, and it has this. I don't know if you can see, but there's like a bump out right here. Yeah. Right. So that helps give it this fullness of what a full size guitar would have. So oh. even though it's a shorter, compact size, that bump out really helps. And uh, I've never seen that. Never seen that on a guitar. You gotta check these out, man. They're amazing. But uh, nice. all my front of house guys too. Like when I plug in that, as opposed to like one of my other acoustics, yeah, you know, they just look at they go that guitar. Use that one. <laughs> it sounds straight out of the gate. Just you know, most acoustics don't sound good. Just straight quarter inch cable. No, they don't. Yeah. This one's yeah, they don't. Amazing. It sounds just like. It should, like you want it to sound. Do you, do you buy it for the direct sound? Because that's, that's what I do. I look for a guitar that only has a good direct sound. I don't care what it sounds like acoustically, really. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I only got it uh, because, A, you know, I love Taylor's, and I just wanted something um, that was easy to travel with. Because, you know, I was, I was spending most of the time, like two to three weeks out of every month, you know, on the road and I'm lugging around a full size acoustic with me, even if I'm not doing a show, like just to have it. So if I get inspired to write, you know, if I'm sitting in the hotel, yeah, whatever, yeah, just to yeah, annoy the neighbors, you know, exactly. So yeah. something that was more compact, lighter weight, the case for that even comes with, you know, it's a backpack, you can wear it on your back, the straps. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, so that's why I got it. And then it was a fluke. I was doing this um, small show in San Diego 
right before COVID. It was like January of 2020. And I plugged in this guitar. I, I had a full size and I was going to plan on using that for the show. And then I had this one as a backup and I plugged in oh. and the front of the house guy, he's like, dude, that guitar. I, mean, I that one. heard it. He heard it. I thought I was nuts. Jeez. You know, it's a uh, send me a uh, send me the model number of it after I'll look it up. Yeah, so it's called uh, a GS Mini Taylor G GS. Okay, this I'll look it up. Colwood, I love Colwood. That's my favorite because I I use I've been using Ovations for like twelve years. Okay, yeah, those are nice. I had the Colwood ones, but that's another reason why I like the Ovations too is because they're small. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just easier to travel with, you know, but. They don't sound good acoustically, but they sound good plugged in. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. But no, I, I don't play uh, acoustic live much on stage. You know, it's always like that big rock sound. So that's where the Les Pauls come in. But I, oh, okay. I write everything on acoustic. You know, that, yeah. And that just comes from Rogers being a great producer. You know, he taught me a long time ago. He's like, man, if you can make a song sound like a hit with just your vocal and acoustic, then you've got something, you know? Yep. Honestly, dude, I haven't, because of COVID, I haven't plugged up an electric guitar in a year. I've, oh, really? Yeah, it's been a year since I've since I plugged up my electrics. And See, I'm the opposite. I, I, <laughs> I actually went back to my childhood and started just playing electric only, and I wow. said, screw the acoustic. Wow. <laughs> opposite. I like, I yeah, just, but I was the same way as you. And I, I, I guess got to a point where I'm like, I can't play what I want to play on acoustic. I have to play on electric. <laughs> yeah. Well, your, your genre is a little heavier though. So it may, it would make sense to me, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause but, I was playing all that stuff on acoustic and I'm like this stuff, I mean, it's starting to kill me and yeah, stuff, it, Even my fingers. And I was like, you just, uh, nah, you know, it's not working. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it, it, yeah, that, for that genre, I mean, you gotta write with, it's, you know, it's, it's riff based, so you need, you know, the, yeah, the amp, you need that vibe, you know, but yeah. all of, all yeah. of my stuff, you know, it starts with like the lyrics and the melody, so that's why, you know, if I can get that right on an acoustic, then no matter yeah. what clothes you want to put on the song as far as production wise, you know, it works. Good to go. Yeah. Nice. Well, I appreciate you coming on. First guest here, season one, Instagram Good. Live. Good to be on. Mikey Wayne. Is it MikeyWayne.com or MikeyWayneOfficial.com? MikeyWayne.com. Yep. Okay, cool. Because I've seen like two on there. Yeah, so Instagram is MikeyWayneOfficial. And, but okay. yeah, my website is MikeyWayne.com. So everything will be I Googled, yeah. We'll have some stuff coming out here in the next few months. And uh, oh, we got my podcast too. I got to get you on. That's right. That'll be cool. Because that's, it'll be all three of us, right? Yeah, yeah, it'll be me, you, okay. be on it. Yeah, he's kind of gonna right. co-host some episodes with me. So, okay, so maybe maybe uh, an extra episode or sometime. I think you can actually go live with three people on this now. Cool. cool. So maybe all three of us could jump on some. It'd be kind of cool or figure it out. Yeah, okay, yeah, dude, it'll be fun. All right, well, I appreciate it. I always like you know hearing different backgrounds and stuff, and I. I, I can't believe like how close kind of your background is to mine in a, in a, in a way, yeah, it's wild. even though we're, we're kind of, you know, different voices, different styles of music sort of, totally. but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's cool. And it's, that's really cool. You know, but I do agree with Rogers. He, he actually gave me that same advice, um, in 2010, it's 10 years ago since I've seen him worked on stuff and he goes, wow. dude, that's got to start with the acoustic. I'm, I met him. I've known him for almost 10 years now. Okay. Yeah. You probably met him. I think you met him around the time I was working on the second bunch of my songs, because okay. that's when Joe started writing with other people and that kind of thing. And so that's, yeah. Cause you're, you're an in-betweener yeah. and that kind of, I met Joe yeah. just started getting into doing the songwriting with other people and, you know, doing the Nashville co-writing thing. So yeah, funny man. See, I worked with Josh a little bit with with my vocals. The singer Josh Brown. Dude, I love Josh. He's awesome. His voice is like, I don't know why. It's so unique. I love it. Very unique. It's unlike anything it, you've ever heard, and it just yeah. 
it works for the stuff he writes. Yes, the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like just so, I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. It's got that Southern rock twang, but. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. We'll, ch we'll chat more here. I'm sure we could go on for another hour. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> what you, thanks for having me, man. It's so good to actually meet you for once, you know. Yeah. Hearing your name from Rogers for like 10 years now. Um, I'll send you some of my music too. Um, send me your email and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll email you some files. Okay. Yeah. It's just, uh, uh, it's Mikey at MikeyWayne.com. So just okay. send it on over. So. The public knows it now. The public, it's, it's not hidden. It's right there on the website. I have no shame. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. My, yeah, I use Yahoo still. I refuse doing like a at dot com. I'm a Yahoo guy. I didn't even know they still existed. Wow. I tell everybody, Yahoo, don't Google Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you still have oh, an yeah. AOL account also? A what? An AOL account? I do. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I signed into it uh, two years ago, two or three years ago, just to check it. <laughs> That's hilarious. I do. Um, I have Gmail. I have Hotmail, not Outlook. Um, I don't use a cell phone. <laughs> You're like my great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what everybody says. Frank's like, uh, you know, uh, grandfather here. <laughs> oh my God. That's awesome. Hey, I respect it though, dude. I get sick of being attached to the phone. Like, yeah, I mean, well, I have, I, this is my house. Wi-Fi cell phone to do social media and interviews, but I only have a track phone that I use when I need to. Nice. All right, dude. I didn't even know those still existed. <laughs> yeah. That is, oh yeah, they do. <laughs> All right. I respect it though. I respect it. All right, man. Well, thanks a lot. And uh, I'll reshare this and I'll send you all the links. All right. Yeah, man. Good chat. Thanks, dude. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I'll see you again, all right, next Wednesday, the Wednesday after, Wednesday after, and the Wednesday after. I'll see you. And after that? No. Yeah, we'll see. It depends on the guests. All right. <laughs> all right. See you, man. See you, bro. Bye. Thanks, man. Have a good one. You too. Bye.